Welcome to another video from Data to Decisions. In today's video, we'll be building a chart which helps us compare actuals versus target with the time series data. For example, here, what you see on screen is trend of a metric actual values by month, and we can compare that against the target value, which is in the line, blue line, month by month. The difference between this and one of the previous videos where we did actual versus target is that the x-axis is time series data. You can see that the column here is a date column, and we are using that on the x-axis, which is the difference here. And this introduces some extra options and settings. We will cover that, and we will be building this chart from scratch. So let's start with the raw data. So you would want to make sure that your data has date values in this column. And then you have the actual and the target values. A date value, if you are wondering whether your column is actually a date column or not, click on any of the cells and then go and check if the format shows the long date in a date format, if your cell value is actually a date value or not. For example, it'll say 45292 as a number, but then the long date is actually a date value. If it was text, all these will have the same text value in the format menu. So this is a very quick way that I use to check if the value is a date value or not. So assuming that you have a list of dates here and then actual and target values, let's get started. We will select all the values, go to insert. We will be inserting a clustered column, which is the default value. The legend automatically comes up. The orange is the target series here. You can just right click inside the chart and say change chart type. Both uh, approaches will take you to this dialog box where you can say, I want a combo chart. The actual series will be a cluster column. The target should be a line. And you can see the preview. This is what we want. So I'm going to hit OK. Now it puts a line for the target and the actuals are in columns. Looking good so far. You can see that it doesn't look great. Uh, especially if this is the size of the chart you're going for. Next step, then you would want to right click, format axis, and then a right side panel opens up. And here, go to the number option. This is something that is different when your uh, x axis values are in date format. If it was, let's say, for example, departments, which is just text values, right? Department, IT, finance, and HR you will not have these option to choose date formats for your x-axis. And also, you can scroll up and see here, Excel automatically detects whether it's a date or a text axis. In this case, it detected it as a date axis. How do I know that? You can see, for example, here, the units are months, days, and years. This is because Excel detected correctly that the values are date format. Now, let's go to the bottom again. The number, let's say I want to choose a date category formats. I'll have some options to choose from. I can, I can choose one that works for me. So for example, if I select month and year, so M-12, that means this is January 2024, J-24. So this, if this format works for you, you can keep this, which is very uh, short and clear. Uh, but if, for example, if I go with one of these other options, which spells out MMM-YY, then it will look like this. Again, if the size is a, an issue um, for, you know, depending on where you want to place this chart, then um, you can expand the size a little bit to fit uh, all the 12 months, or you can reduce the font size uh, to fit. Or there's another option. You can actually also only show one every two months. So I'll show you how. In the units option, you can say, let's say I do two. I press enter. What this does is the labels here, it will skip one and go to the next. So January, it skips February, and then it goes to March. Even this is clear um, to the user that we're talking about 12 months and you don't have to mention, but now you can actually say MMM instead of the other option which we saw, which is just saying M. So I'll show you the other one again. So this one was M12. 
Again, you can choose what works for your audience. The main purpose of all of this is to make sure that the user understands what they're looking at. In most cases, if you have the right title and say this is a monthly trends in 2024, then people understand that each column presents a different month in 2024. Where it gets confusing is if you have different annual periods. So sometimes, you know, it starts in January in some um, official, you know, financial uh, purposes. The year, financial year may not start in January, it may start in a different month. So those kinds of things, depending on your audience, depending on the data you're presenting, you can choose the options to make sure that the user understands what they're looking at, it's the underlying concept. I'm just showing you the different options you have. You can choose any of these formats. If you only have six months of data, you can even go with a little bit larger uh, or a longer uh, format. So enough about that. Now you understand that there is a, an option to choose the format. I'm gonna go with this for this exercise. Now let's go and continue and finish out the formatting because the basic essential chart is already there. Well, we just have to finish up the formatting. I'm gonna right click and then if you click on it, you'll see an option on the right side, select panel. I'm gonna choose stop, so move it to the top, and then I'll further move it here because it's I don't need to take up that much space. I want the chart to take up more space. Next thing I'm gonna do, right click, format grid lines, make sure that this grid line is not really taking up a lot of color and attention. Then I'm gonna put the title, and the title here would be monthly, Actual versus target, something like that. So I can also format this. And then in this case, I will move it to the left. Again, this is personal preference. This is, you know, wherever you want the title to be placed, you can do that. Um, you, you can add the um, access titles by clicking this. So what where this is important is, again, depending on the audience, depending on the context, this is very clear it's a month. So I don't need the x-axis title. Um, but I, for example, if it's not very clear what is the actual for, what metric is this? And you can put it in the title or you can put it in the y-axis also. So for example, I can make room and then this can be whatever the metric is that you are measuring. You can type that in there. And so that informs the user okay, there we go. So that informs the user um, what actual metric they're looking at. Let's make sure I spell it right. Okay. Okay, so now we have the titles, then what we can do is to, we can also uh, format the actual columns and the line. So what I'm gonna do is to click on the column and I can change the color. So if I want uh, to add any of the different colors, I can choose that and then I will click on the line. Um, another tip here is that if you're not able to click directly because you know sometimes you know the cursor it's a little bit hard to select exact element on the chart you always have the option on the right side panel here because in this drop down you can actually select many of these elements so for example if i'm clicking anywhere outside uh, the chart you don't have that side panel but as soon as i click the chart i have this option uh, and now I can do a lot more with it. And now, for example, I want to select the line series. So I know that it's a target, so it's called a target. So I'm going to click on it. So now it allows me a lot more settings. And I can say, okay, I want the line, but I want the line to be of a specific color. So I can choose that. I can go to the marker. I can go to the marker um, options and choose. Maybe I want to do a circle. Uh, and then you can control the size of this. And then also I'm going to do a solid fill, do a light fill inside, but I'll do a border and make it dark. So let me zoom in and you can see how it looks. So you have the dark blue line and then the marker. Uh, perfect. So everything looks um, as we need. Now we need to add the labels. So in this case, I'm going to click on the columns and I will add data labels, many ways to do it. Click on the column, go plus, and then do click, and that'll add the data labels. 
In this case, I will click on the label and then I can choose where I want the label to be. I'm going to choose inside in. Um, so this will kind of put just under the end of the column. And um, this now has the actual and the target. Depending on the purpose of your presentation, you could add the label for the target also. If that's what you want to highlight. It's very easy. Same thing, click on the line, go to plus, add data labels. In this scenario, I feel it will be too many labels, so I'm kind of skipping it. But depends on the uh, context of the presentation, it's very easy to add the data labels there as well. Finally, I'm going to click on the entire chart, go to the fill in line, and then I will choose solid line. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a little gray, under corners. There we have it. So we've built the monthly actual versus targets, and we covered a lot of things around the x axis. In this case, it's a date value and so we have more options to format the dates differently the main thing i want to stress here is that the target is a continuous line here whereas in a, in a previous video when we actual versus target by a category like a department name in that case we didn't actually use a line a continuous line that's because lines represent a series over time so use the line targets only when your data is a time series data across by years, months, or days. As long as there's a time component to it, use the line, otherwise do not. So that's the end of today's video. I'll see you soon in the next one. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching.